that I'm too big to answer my DMs. This will be the last message I ever send your ass. It's been six minutes and still no reply. I don't deserve it. I know you got my last two solutions. I drew the angles on them perfect. want to hear about this or no sure. are you scared yeah. a little bit just a little okay so <laughs> you're gonna hear about it anyway okay so check this out so i am uh di- okay so this is a dream that i had and i'm out in golden gate park uh digging in the music concourse about three or four a.m so it's pitch black out there and i'm digging and i assume i have a permit although this was me being asleep So maybe they give like sleep permits from the dream police or something like that. But so I'm out there, I'm out there um, digging and this tiny little light shows up off in the distance and it starts getting bigger and brighter and bigger and brighter until suddenly it is a group of people next to me. And who does it turn out to be? None other than the fruit of the loom guys. (laughs) <laughs> like you the know big what? fruit the, the big fruit, grapes the sure. apple and the grapes guys <laughs> and they start screaming at me and um so you know long story short i wake up in the hospital the next day no that didn't that part didn't happen uh then the long story short is um i screamed and ran and woke up like out of breath all freaked out so can you guys interpret that for me um buy new underwear <laughs> uh, that's, so, I think it's your subconscious telling you that you're obsessed with bananas and grapes <laughs> for whatever reason. That could be, although I ran. Don't forget the running part. What about what about getting a uh, permit um, to dig in your sleep? Where do you where do you register for that? Who can issue that? The psychiatric ward. That's where you <laughs> should go. Freddie. <laughs> And with that, the Fruit of the Loom segment has ended. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. I'm going to put that in the podcast. There's my, uh, <laughs> there's my, that was my dream. My, Your I, dreams are a lot more exciting than mine. I had a dream about roasting a chicken, and I've never done that before in my life. And that was the dream. That was it. Wait, you've never roasted a chicken before? No, never. Never a whole chicken. Or you've never dreamed about it? Both. I've, I've never done either. Wow, hmm. that's amazing, dude! You got to roast a chicken. <laughs> what do you guys just eat in your house? Like just spaghettios? Loretta must be unhappy. No, man, I cook the most delicious food. Well, she's a vegetarian, so I made this like rice and bean and and vegetable um, kind of Mexican enchilada filling, and you know, put some oh, nice. spices in it and stuff, and then um, you know, put that in tortilla shells and um, fresh tomato and lettuce and sour cream. And, you know, made these like vegetarian burrito. Like I sautéed some potatoes too, um, put those in there. So I, I cook. So you're one things. of those healthy dudes. Yeah, you can always tell who the healthy is. <laughs> I, I, I love cooking. You know, like I get kids. inventive. They have nice skin. They look. <laughs> yeah, like I got. Kids. I popped it the other day. They're 124 pounds. <laughs> I, they fit, their jeans fit. Oh man! And then you have me. I eat meat with ice cream. <laughs> I put the ice cream on my meat. Yo, fuck A1 steak sauce, man. Just cover that shit with ice cream. Rocky Road. Just cut out the middleman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Put some caramel. Moose tracks, more like steak tracks. <laughs> That's gross. Um, <laughs> Yo, I'm going to get my cup of coffee real quick. It's like a three-second walk. I'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. You're going to need it for this. I got up, Liz. dude. I got up yeah. at 4 a.m. today. Why? 4 I mean, I did too, but why? Why it would you do that? Terrible. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah. It was terrible. I just I woke up wide awake and just you know usually you get up at four from anxiety or something and you get, and you're like oh I'm tired I'm going back to bed. I got up at four. I was ready to go, and it's four o'clock now and I'm kind of feeling the feeling the pain. 
Oh, dude, I'm used to that, though. Like, I wake up at 4 o'clock every single morning. I'm at work oh, at 5 God. in the morning, and I don't get off until 6 or 7. Oh, that every single day. sounds hideous. Yeah, it takes well, me about 6 or 7 minutes to get off, too. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I can't do it. When you get... <laughs> Listen, I hate you. Kids like I woke up really early at two a.m. in the uh, afternoon, and I went to Starbucks. <laughs> That's awesome. That's what I do every time I go to work. I wake up at one or two, and then it's like I got to be at work at three, and it's like yes. I work all night. And- I got my free mocha frappuccino. Awesome. We hate you, it's okay. When you hey, when you guys get to my age, you will not be able to do that anymore. Trust me. And speaking of my age, there was an awesome episode from eu that had a ton of stuff from when i grew up in it yeah a bunch of 80 so, stuff so i guess we're in the we're in the podcast though. i don't so know i awesome. tried I'll, i tried yeah. what did I'll you guys figure, dude, i'll figure out i'll figure out an <laughs> intro <laughs> okay. i really i really liked that episode it was good um i liked it for more than just because palancar was in it though because it had a lot of people that like i grew up on like leah thompson yeah. She, she was hot then she's hot now she doesn't hold any bars in terms of uh interviews i, I liked it i she's got a she's sassy you she's know sassy. i had to watch it, or i had to go look up um <laughs> like old oh, luring in back to the future and then compare it to what the interview had and i was shocked at kind of like they got it a little bit right but she looks way hotter than like what she looked like in the movies when she was older yeah. it was really crazy to see that yeah. these like these interviews that people are since the since the shutdown and everything josh gates obviously like nobody who does tv can go anywhere uh so they're doing all these phone interviews these zoom interviews and they're really good like they're more interesting than i thought they would be totally. like the whole interview about the goonies it was great i thought it was awesome right. um wh- uh who's the bill and ted guy alex winter yeah, yeah. He goes, he said something about, he said the next episode is going to be Dickensian. <laughs> Did you guys catch that? I'm like, this, really? There's going to be like a Dickens theme in this? That's interesting. But I'm looking forward to that. Did you know that uh, Kid's dad uh, has some art in uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey? You no. know, I was going to say that. And I, I thought that was really interesting. And I, I don't know if you guys know the story, but they... They used it without permission, I think. What? And uh, it was a, a painting of a, what, a minotaur? And it was yep. in the scene where um, the Grim Reaper is like doing some stuff. Spe- I think I, I haven't seen that movie in such a long time. If you someone else wow. wants to take over. Awesome. So there's a seance scene in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, right? Um, it's where Bill's uh, stepmom who went to high school with him. Um, <laughs> they're, tr- they're trying to talk to the dead, right? Yes. Um who all they're talking this is just in, insanely like famous people anyway uh bill and ted are dead so their spirits come and they haunt the seance <laughs> uh, and, and she opens this book i think it's called the book of evil or the book of witchcraft or something and just opens it flat on the table and there's a john jude palancar painting so because i'm this stupid secret nerd I like went and looked and it looks like uh, JJP sold that painting to a publisher for Stephen King. And it was in a book. I think it was nightmares and dreamscapes, but I could be different. And they just sort of reskinned that book for the, um, for the movie. Awesome. Yeah. So, Whoa. you know, weird little tie in. So do they owe us money for using that? I don't know if you're aware, but just because we like the secret <laughs> doesn't mean we get oh. any of Alan Carr's money. Oh, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Did you like my use of we? Okay, quick quiz for you guys. Uh, it's not even really a quiz, just a question. Better rank rank these Keanu Reeves movies, okay? I'll go. All right. Bill and Ted's, The Matrix, uh, Point Break. Point Break oh. is number one. Oh, right? man. That's hard. Not even Speed? Speed isn't even in this? Speed, there was too much bus driving in that. There I'm, was. Not in, I'm not in the public, <laughs> public transportation movies. I'm going to tell you. I, I don't know. A bus that goes fast? Anyway. No, those are your choices. I'd say yeah, Matrix I, first, yep. and then Bill and Ted's, and then Point Break. Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm all about some Point Break. Point, point break, break was break. pretty good. Yeah. Then the, then the Matrix, probably, and then Bill and Ted. I'm I'm virtual tie for Point Break and Matrix. Matrix is 
pretty much one of my all-time favorite movies, though. And then Bill and Ted's third. No, no, um, no offense to our friend who was getting interviewed, though. What did you say his name was? Alex. Alex Winter. Winter. Yeah. Good movie. Yeah. Okay. So, there I was digress. a lot of throwbacks. There was a lot of throwbacks in that show that were really, really good, though. All those like, games, you have no yeah. idea. All those, like you guys are thinking, "Wow, that's fascinating history," and I'm going, "Like I'm still living in that world. I never moved <laughs> past the '80s, right?" So I have a bunch of those games still, those handhelds, like Simon and stuff. The little football yeah. game, the orange, like rectangular thing. Yeah, it's so. sneak and spell um, on there. Uh, I actually own one of those. It was the f- first computer I ever owned, and I got it from, um, I think, the middle school my brother was going to. Cool. Um, it's an old Mac classic, and I, you know, it was when you had to boot Windows or, or not Windows. Oh God, I'm going to get sued by Apple for that. Um, <laughs> you had to boot uh, System Seven on a floppy disk yeah, yeah. and then you had to take it out and then you could put in like Microsoft word or asteroids or, or something. Um, it was such a cool computer. It had like 512 kilobytes of memory or something like that. <laughs> cool. It was yeah, super old cool school. to see that old stuff. You could, you could basically like bring up a spreadsheet in it. That's about all it did. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe if you had all day, yeah. you could load that. <laughs> you might be able to, and it may not crash. It may or may not crash. That's cool. Dude, so I've got a, a my Rachel one day came home from work uh, and brought home an Atari computer. Like back when Atari video games were awesome like and, and new, they also made computers. And I forget which computer it was. Yeah. Um, but I still have it. And I spent a week getting that computer online. And actually got it to connect to the internet. It took like a week. No. Yeah. Really? Old software is awesome. Did you send a fax? No, I did not. I, I got it online <laughs> and it couldn't do anything. Like all it could do is be connected. <laughs> you couldn't browse website. You couldn't do anything. I could ping another IP address and that's it. It's it's like I'm spent. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That then I took it. that. I, I gave I it, it everything apart. I could. I took it all apart. I put it on a shelf and it's still on the shelf. That so is, if anybody wants to get online at like 12.2 K BPS or whatever, I can hook you up. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, so the new episode um, was preceded by the, the Boston episode, which they recut and they added some stuff. It seemed like a, a lot of the points that were made in the podcast episodes sort of carried over into that. Some additional scenes. Um yeah, they're, they're, it's it's weird to me, right? Like the Boston episodes come out and uh, JJ, JJP said that the Boston find was authentic. Joel mm-hmm. and Trilling said the Boston find was authentic. Yeah. Uh, Sandy, uh, if, if she knows anything, said the Boston find was authentic. But people still sort of doubt that, which is, is, is super <laughs> weird to me. So since this, this is as close as we're going to get, this is as close as we're right. ever going to get to what a, else? well, right. this is, this this moment right now is the closest we're ever going to get to having like someone who can definitively say that this is not fake. Kit, I'm sure your dad has talked about Boston. Has he ever said that it was fake? I I don't think so. I, I anything he talks about is um, definitely not fake. I, I, I everything is intentional what what he did and sometimes it's like intentionally misleading like there's some shit no, that I mean, happens with go ahead i mean the, i mean the find in general like it, I, he seems like the kind of person to where if eu came up and said we found this in a ballpark he, it, and he knew it wasn't in a ballpark he would call he would call bullshit right has he ever has there any been any kind of hint with him that that cast that they pulled out of the ground wasn't authentic. No, I don't, I don't think so at all. No, I, I think that it, it uh, um, it, it, you'll notice when you, when you ask him certain questions or, or um, you know, if you, if you're, you're onto something and you ask him a question or um, he's either quiet about it or he denies it. And then his face gets really red. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is, is really yeah. funny. Um, like yeah, watching that right. episode about, uh, I, I forgot what they said, but he, you know, he's like, no, 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 no. But his, his no, face got no. so like, red. What, when his face turns red, does it mean that he's lying or does it mean he's embarrassed or what does it, it mean? It means that you've pissed him off. Okay. And you don't want to see him pissed off. Okay. It's either right. pissed off or 
Um, well, see, when he's like pissed off at me, his face doesn't get really red because he's getting it all out. You know, he's, he's vocalizing <laughs> it. So it's, there's nothing building up. Right. Um, I, I think that when you're on something and you're on one of his, his, his secrets that I, I think is um, uh, when you're on something, it, yeah. it's like, oh, shit. You know, like they're, they're finding me out and I got to stay yeah. as hard as a rock um, and, and not, you know, say anything, not hard as a rock like that. You know, I mean, like uh, you, you got to stay quiet and uh, you know, I have to write and um, you have to back up like, uh, you know, what right. he, he said years ago about, you, you know, he doesn't tell my mom anything. He doesn't tell me anything. Right. It's true. It, it's, it's true. A hundred percent. And I, I think when, when you're close to something, he wants so badly to tell you that you're on to something and he wants so badly to, to, uh, you know, help people out, but he can't because he, he's honoring Byron and, mm -hmm. you know, he made this agreement and it's like not a blood oath, but it's pretty fucking close. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so he's just trying to be as respectful as possible. And he doesn't, he, it's also really fun, I think, to see how how many people are, are looking for this and if you were to give it all away what's the fun in that yeah yeah that's totally true. totally and i and didn't mean uh by the way i didn't mean lying i mean he's a he's a he's a hard read let's just put it that yes, way he's yes, a hard absolutely. read absolutely yeah. yeah and i, I can't that. tell whether he's speaking out of the side of his mouth sometimes or he's like confirming something i know we're all in the same boat and it sounds like kit you are you know, you, you're also in the same boat. He does a lot of that. Yeah. It's, and it's weird how many people don't understand all of that. Like, uh, JJP said, he's not going to tell you anything. He's never like, he's given away hints, but never, it doesn't seem to be really anything direct and super helpful. It always tends to be stuff that we already kind of knew, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, he said, he's not going to help you. He never really gives you any hints. Um, he often, he, he seems to often be misleading and he asks very explicitly for people to leave him alone. And yet people still message him. Like the amount of messages that you get to the Palancar. And you um, see him too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see him too. <laughs> it's crazy. You get like three or four a day. If not more. And, and yeah. What's weird to me is like, they'll send a message and it'll be like, I know you said not to message you but i want to talk to you about <laughs> but i'm doing uh, it anyway yeah. i want to talk to you about jacksonville here Florida. is my garbage right. Take it. and then 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 kit's response is always so kind like i don't know how you do it <laughs> i try uh, it's starbucks all right it, like my patience for people <sighs> has gone up significantly since i started i was always a patient person um but it, starbucks has really helped me out with just like yeah okay you know we'll we'll work through that we'll you know here's this how about this you know <laughs> it's always it's always like hi this is kit dad doesn't read these or you know <laughs> I, can't help, oh I can't help you with the secret i can't tell you anything he's not going to tell you anything i can't forward your message along and it's always like cool kit i got it but here's my idea <laughs> <laughs> and then they send me a pdf or something i'm like I'll look at it. Okay. And then it's like, you know, my secrets now. And I'm like, I, it's not that I don't care. It's that I just don't have any interest in being like, Hey, look what Jonathan, you know, has to say about this. I don't really care. <laughs> Dude, that's a real problem though. Like we, we get, we, people threaten to sue us over that. Yeah. It's, we, it's we've crazy. had like lawsuit threats. It's nuts. Like, come on. Your ideas happened. aren't that good. Yeah. Nobody so, ever threatens to sue me, and I and I kind of like that. And, and it's because I'm not important enough. <laughs> it's it, you're so important. You're like Josh Gates. People can't reach you. I'm basically that's, untouchable. That's true. Yeah, that's, yes, that's, you have to go through a mountain of men to get to me. To get to Brett, you got to go through me. <laughs> I am the mountain of a man, so to speak. <laughs> um, Ain't no mountain high enough, except for the one I'm on. Um, okay, so let's see here. Uh, Okay, so by the way, okay, so we got through all of the awesome 80s stuff, totally into that. I love, you know, that's all the music I listen to and all the stuff I do is all based in the 80s. So that was like perfect primer for me. Um, so, oh, oh, I do have a question. Uh, so the oh, can we get to the interview part? Have we started yeah. the interview part? Okay, so yeah, yeah. a couple of things I have questions about. Um, does, is wearing a mask and a costume something that JJP would do just for fun or 
would he do that to lead us down some path or what was the origin of that? It's, it's odd that you have to ask this question and I know why, because someone on Facebook thinks John Palancar wearing the Amadeus mask or whatever was yes. a hint, right? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I think that's, uh, it's, it's just for fun. He's a really okay. zany character, especially I feel like when he knows he's going to be on TV or, or, or he's wacky in a different sense and yeah it's like our christmas photo one year was we all dressed up as pirates um he's got all Sweet. sorts of costumes and cloaks and um he bought some like uh, uh masks recently like not recently in the last couple of years and i think those are going to be making an appearance in some future work <laughs> cool. um but i i i think it was just for, for okay fun. he wants so to we be can... this mysterious kind of figure Yes. Uh, so we can put that to rest. We don't have to have any more comments about that. The costume was right. Just don't read into fun. the mask like it is ties into the secret. Uh, Good. It, it he's just he's just used to wearing his mask right now, which you yeah. all should as well. Yes, exactly. Um, and then another uh, uh, seemingly popular subject is the trash on the floor, the placement. <laughs> The placement and type of trash that may not be trash. Somebody called it trash, right? But it might be just how his studio is or wherever no, he was. What it is, he was trying to tell you exactly where the Houston cask is. Oh my See, God. if you line up all of the paintings mm -hmm. that were in the back Mute. And then with perspective, and then you take your, uh, your protractor, you Mute. need a protractor. Mute this guy, Kit. Mm -hmm. He's done. It's just well, me. Well, right okay. Now. So if you zoom in on one of those pieces of paper and then hit the enhance button on your keyboard, because everybody's keyboard has an enhance button, it'll reveal the exact coordinates to it. No, um, his, it. his studio is, um, it's a studio. Uh, yeah. My studio looks the same. There's there's clippings of, of paper. There's old checks. There's, uh, you know, tear offs from a sketchbook. Um, I, I've worked over there a couple times um, for, for, uh, the most recent time was I had to build a frame for a painting and I, I was over there and I, I couldn't work in it. There was so much shit everywhere. Um, not to say that he's a messy person. He's not at all. Um, but it's a studio. Um, <laughs> it's dirty. Exactly. You know, if you go over there barefoot, your feet are going to be black on the bottom. Um, but I had to sweep up stuff and it was all just like, you know, foam from building crates or, or sawdust, um, you know, bits of paper. Um, and yeah. he thanked me for cleaning up his studio a little bit, but it, it just, it's, it gets used. That's just a good thing. I, you know, to see that stuff on the floor, it's fine. Yeah. An artist studio is like a artist version of a man cave or like a wood shop or whatever. You do your work down there and you don't care about cleaning up later. Right. Cause it's not like nobody goes into that studio. Yeah. It's um, just your space. Right. And, you know, sometimes if I have to, I'm like, Hey dad, can I have your studio key? And he's like, Oh, why? You know? Oh, I need a, a, fucking sanding block you know and he's like uh, okay you know just don't don't touch anything <laughs> so uh it's I, I don't know it's it's his space i like knowing that john palancar's studio is locked even when he is at home and no one else is That's there awesome. oh yeah it's, sure. locked. it's locked it's, it's, and, right, it's locked and, and when he go and when he goes in there he has to wear that costume with that mask yeah. <laughs> really <laughs> it's <laughs> yes exactly this, this exact thing is going to be the bane of his existence though because he's involved in this hunt he he's not going to be able to say anything in the future that people aren't going to think is a hit like people are going to take every single little thing he does he's going to do it like, more yeah he's going to do it more just to get <laughs> us we can't let him know that we think this i i agree i think that he's going to start uh <laughs> you know doing some some more stuff that might wow. now that he knows you know that this has attention and um uh, not that he's he's doing it to you know get more exposure but i i think he likes to to hide stuff he's always hidden stuff in, in, in paintings and in work whether it has to do with the secret or not and i think that the the newer stuff or, or maybe the stuff since the secret um that was news to me totally news to me that you know, I, I had every doubt that, you know, he told me he was done with that. You know, that was part of his life. He doesn't really particularly think those are good paintings that he did for The Secret and that he's moved on. Um, I, I, I thought he was totally done with it. And to hear that, you know, there's still some stuff 
you know, in, in there is in newer stuff that applies to it. That was news to me. Yeah. But how far does that go? Right? Like we, we've seen that painting. Um, Oh God, I had the name of that painting. It was in spectrum. It won an award music and rever was it muse and reverie. Yeah. Was the name of that painting. Um, we've, we've, he showed that painting and said there was something about the secret in it, but the, it, he's, he pointed out that it obviously has a cask in it, right? It was painted shortly after Byron's death. Does it go any further than that? Does it have to, like, I'm sure he's not hiding maps of these cask cities in Aragon. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it doesn't have to go further than I was thinking about my friend when I made this painting. So I put a little thing in it, you know, in honor of him. Yeah. I, I think that, um, the, the Aragon painting that he had, you know, displayed, I think that was just like another like, hey, this is also what else I've done. Or this is what you might know me from is, is this, you know, huge book that um, I forgot how old Christopher Paolini was when he wrote that book, like 15, like or yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, incredible following behind that book. I, I think that was another turning point in his career. And um, I, I remember when my, my dad did that um, Muse and Reverie painting um, and it was strange to me because it didn't get shipped out anywhere. Usually like, um, you know, you would you like contract me for a pose or something. He would do photograph sketches and then, you know, you would finish it in a couple of days and then send it off and, um, you know, it would get scanned and printed on a book cover or something, but that didn't happen with this, this painting. And, um, I, I was like, why, why did he do this painting? Um, and it was hanging up at the, the top of the stairs, at the little landing on the second floor of my parents' house. And um, I don't think it's there anymore. I, I, I haven't seen it in a while, but um, I always was like, what's this open box thing? You know, I know kind of what that's going for. And I was just like, no, this doesn't mean anything. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It wasn't even at a show. That was one of the, and it's weird yeah. to know that he has it and he didn't take it to the show. Right. I, I, I can't believe that, you know, and maybe that was just one of his, um, his more personal fine artworks. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that he does that um, you know, there's no photographs of, or, you know, it's still in progress and the beautiful paintings and um, I, I I don't know if he just has to finish them or they're not ready yet, or he had a change of heart when he was doing them. But that was one of those paintings where it's like, uh, maybe he was thinking about something, you know, when he yeah. did it and had to, had mm. to get it out. Hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can yeah. see why it's won awards. It's a beautiful painting. I'll be sure to forward that to him. Uh, he'll, he'll thank you very much for that. So let's, let's talk about process a little bit because people have always, uh, people have looked at these paintings really, really hard and they see things inside of these paintings, which could be a result of the process of making a painting. Um, could you sort of, uh, run us through the process that, that your dad would use or that you, that really any artist would use to create a work like is in the secret. I mean, when, when you, when you start, obviously you would make a sketch. Is that the first step? Just a sketch? Yeah. I, I think that, um, sketches, and I wish I, I, I could have seen really how much work went into these paintings, but we are only left with the final product, but I'm sure there were tons of sketches and in different compositions and, um, you know, things that, uh, you know, looked too fussy or too busy or too simple or too complex. Um, I think that at least um, the sketching stage, you work through a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll do uh, maybe five sketches for one painting. And then you, you pick out the two best sketches. And then you do two more sketches of those two sketches. And then you get down to one. And then you do a sick-ass drawing of that one sketch. And then you use that for reference for the first sketch that you um, might uh, uh, project onto a, a surface or a substrate, or you might, you know, free draw or hand draw onto the, whatever the support is that you're working on. Um, and then, then you just uh, go from that. I don't want to overload 
process stuff right now, but no, no, no. Um, I, mean, I would say fine. that's the first step is, is sketches. So what does, what does your dad dorm, normally do? Does he project onto a, say he paints on board, right? He doesn't paint on canvas. Um, he paints on a number of things and he, he gave me a piece of, um, I have it sitting behind me. He, I don't know if they even make it anymore. It's like a Strathmore illustration board. Um, but, uh, he used to paint and I, I don't think he does anymore, but you know, like foam core, like foam board. Um, it's like quarter inch thick. It's like got ply on both sides. Um, he would get that specially mounted with like a kind of a, an absorbent, um, like rag board that was like attached to the foam core. Um, and it, it kind of handled like watercolor paper, but it also kind of took the abuse that like some panel could take. Um, so like layering and, and using wet washes was never an issue, but he's definitely done paintings on, um, uh, like plywood, like a certain kind of plywood, whether it's birch, uh, he, he likes maple, um, uh, like the, the painting ecstasis, I think was done on three quarter inch birch plywood. And the painting is like, you know, 20 pounds or something like that, um, without the frame, um, so I think it, it determines, uh, or, um, cost is an issue of what you paint on, how accessible it is, is another thing. And I think the overall mood or feeling of the piece is important for, uh, you know, what you start out as. I just want to know how badly these were done. What was the... You know what was going through your head how did you hide stuff i, I don't even care where they are right. i don't care where they were buried right. i just want to know what you were thinking and, and um you know right. how intelligent do you have to be to to subtly but obviously hide some stuff in there like there's some stuff in these paintings that's staring us right in the face and it's mm -hmm. so obvious but we just overthink it to the point where it's like it's not a thing anymore yeah I mean that yeah. that baseball dot, that uh, that home plate in Boston that was genius. It was genius yeah. the way he hid that. And how anybody could think to hide that like that, I have no idea. But it was genius. Yeah, I, it's it's the little things like that. And uh, you know, I was always told less is more uh, yeah. by him when I when I would make art. Less is more. We'd, yeah, there's two there's there's two things if I could ever get that man on a podcast that I would love to ask him about. Number one, he told some stories about Byron that were just hilarious. And you can tell that, that he knows that, that he, you could tell he cared about him. You could tell he was a friend and I would love to just hear those stories. But number two, I would love for him to, like you were saying before, Kit, to, to explain some of the paintings that are solved, like explain his thought process behind making the Chicago painting, which it seems like he's proud of that painting by itself, you know, a, apart from this project. But then I guess, like Brett said, it would it would ruin some of the others. So it's not a question you could ask him. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that um, a magician never reveals his secrets, even if someone else has figured it out. Yeah. Um, you know, we all know how card tricks work. We all know sleight of hand. But what's the fun in, in going to a, a magic show and knowing how he's doing all these tricks, you're not going to be amazed. You're not going to be wowed. You're not going to be filled with a sense of mystery or, or, or treasure finding or this, you know, this uh, kind of fire inside of you. That's like the, the thrill of the hunt and this excitement. You're not going to feel that if you know um, how, how things work. And I think that's really important to the rest of them. And I don't think he'll, he'll talk at all until, you know, the day he fucking croaks, um, yeah. unless all 12 are found, um, then he might say, you know, uh, you know, this was that, and you know, this was the Boston pops with the bird and popping the, the bubble, whatever. Um, I, I think that it, Which he'll always still, be mute about that. See, that still makes no sense. I'm, I'm Boston pups. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I would never figure, figure that out, but yeah, it, I, no, it, uh, I'm the opposite. See, I need, I enjoy a magic show more when I know what, how they're doing it. 
So. You and half of Facebook, apparently. Yes. So judging from his, judging give me from some hints. Messages. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me hints. Just kidding. So, um, I think the one main point that I wanted to get to with the process thing, though, was a lot of people look at the the details of these paintings. They they zoom in and they see what is essentially texture. And they think that that's a clue. Like this little piece of texture is the outline of a part or whatever. Uh, so Kit, does your dad use anything like gesso or any kind of prep for his paintings? Anything that he paints on that's not just smooth board? You so, see what I'm saying? Yeah, gesso, you know, I feel like um, if it's on panel or something, this goes for any artist. You put down gesso first. Um, it acts as a support for the paint to adhere to, and you don't want it too smooth because um, then the paint won't stick to it. And if you put like another layer down, it'll just rub right off. Like I've done panels before with like 10 coats of gesso where I wet sanded in between every one, and I was so proud of it, and it was as smooth as glass. And then I painted on it. <laughs> it's a, everything just rubbed right off on the next layer, and I was like, ah, oh, shit. Um but in terms of uh, textural effects, um, I, I don't want to talk about every little thing he does or, or certain techniques. But what I can say is, um, you know, using things like a toothbrush or, or splattering or, um, you know, if you take a, a, you know, I can talk about one technique that I actually figured out that my dad does in some paintings is, um put down a, uh, a wash of color. In this case, it was acrylic. I put it down on a panel um, and then I took a spray bottle with distilled water and I spritzed the, the painting, not directly. I kind of sprayed it from above and let it float down onto it. Um, and then I took a very soft bristle brush, like a hake brush. Um, they're, very, they're, they're known for being very soft and, and holding a lot of liquid. And I took that brush and I just tapped it and it, it picked up where the, the little droplets of water were and it created this really super cool like speckled um effect that happened so quickly and so easily i was like man if i did three layers of this down on one thing it would look uh, totally super cool um and interesting um but you know i can tell you that there are things like uh if you look at the ceiling of your home right now if you look up there's probably some sort of texture on it um, so that's done with like, um, mud, or uh, whatever they call it. Um, they put that on the ceiling and then they take a, like a stamper with, and they put a plastic bag around it and they just push it up into the ceiling and you get that, that texture. So stuff like that might've been used to create certain textures with, you know, matte medium or gloss polymer or, or any sort of acrylic medium that is clear. And by the way, when it comes to making these paintings, we don't necessarily know if we're asking you for information we shouldn't be. Um, so if we are, just avoid it. Okay. I, just, I think that some the of the stuff is like, um, um, if it's, I don't want to say technical secrets, but a lot yeah. of people should know about this stuff. I think it's how he does it. You know, it, it's not what he does. It's how he does it. That's yeah. still a mystery to me. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, so th th there we go. A lot, a lot of some of, some of the texture that we see in these paintings could just be technique. It could be the way he, just the way he does the paintings. It's not necessarily a clue. Basically it's what we're getting into. Um, but we, we did learn something weird, something that sort of took me by surprise and, and blew my mind a little bit. Uh, these paint paintings don't all have dig indicators, which is crazy to me. Like we've, we've, we've spent 40 years now thinking that once you get to the end of the verse, you're going to see something that's going to tell you where to dig. And we learned that's just not the case. I don't well, know. I don't think so. Brett, go ahead. So let's, I, I hate saying this phrase, but let's unpack that momentarily. Okay. So okay. How, what, what, what specifically did he say? Oh God, I'd have to go get the script. Somebody uploaded the script. I don't have it in front of me. I thought you might know it. I sorry, I put you on the spot. Kit, what did he say? I, I don't I don't know. <clears throat> he said um he said something to the effect of so there's a vi there it leads me to believe there's a visual marker right where the box is buried. That's what he said. And um 
JJP said that's incorrect. And that's where he said something about using different uh, optics, right? And different things to look at a painting. He went right? on a, a little bit, a little bit later to say that, but basically the point, right. But the point was that, you know, Josh was asking, oh, cool. So there's something in the, in the image that I can, that I'll spot. <clears throat> now, the problem was, is the way that he, he phrased it. it exactly. So he said, quote unquote, right where the box is buried. So I'll read you the quote. So Josh asked, now, one of the big clues hidden in this painting, of course, is on her sleeve. We have home plate. And then he showed a picture of the, the you know, home plate. Um, where we have the cask was actually buried or where the cast was actually buried is hidden on her sleeve. That leads me to believe that in every single one of these paintings, there is a visual marker that is basically right where the box is buried. Would you confirm that? And JJP says you would be completely wrong, which I guess I can see your point because you could see like the fence post in Chicago, for instance, from where you were digging, but it wasn't right where you were digging. Not technically. Right. And so where is right? Where does that mean 50 feet away or does right? Where mean, six inches away. Yeah. It wasn't, you weren't digging at the fence post, but you could see it is right. it's one of those, it's one of those things where Palancar is, is he just screwing with us or is he right. telling us the absolute truth? Right. But then you have, you have stuff like New York where there's nothing obvious in that painting that you could dig next to. Well, you know, uh, that you, that you know of yet, I guess, because we know Boston, of yet. Yeah. Right. If, if, in Boston, we didn't know about home plate really until so uh, who knows? Here's my question about all that. He also says, or it's also been claimed over and over that he doesn't know where they're buried. So if he doesn't know where they're buried, how does he know there's not a visual indicator nearby? I mean, that's a good question. It is a very, very good question. I, I think that he kind of maybe gave a little bit more of a hint when he started talking about how to look at the paintings uh like for instance um god i'm looking at the 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 houston one right now um and there might not be a visual indicator of where it's buried but it might be something else mm -hmm. where it's literal like um the 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 genie or let's say the camel maybe you you know, the verse takes you to a place and you look around and there's like Camel Street or something. Um, didn't you say, right. uh, didn't you say, or a didn't pack you say of Houston? <laughs> right. Didn't you, didn't you say Houston was your favorite painting? It, it, it used to be. Um, I, I, I always thought Cleveland was my favorite one because I, I can vividly remember um, being a little kid and I'm getting a little emotional. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, he showed me the painting and he was like, Hey, look, here's the terminal tower, you know, and here's the outline of Ohio. And I just remember being a little kid and, and, you know, seeing that shit and that just got ingrained into my brain. And, um, you know, I, I forgot about it for, you know, a decade, a decade and a half until, you know, uh, all this it, stuff it started, started right. Out. Yeah. yeah. Until I got a Facebook. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. uh, I think Cleveland will always be my, my, my top pick. Um, well, I don't know how to follow that up, but I was going to say the odd thing about Houston is this the only one that uses perspective. Well, cause it's in the verse too, right? Yeah. Perspective should not be lost. Mm -hmm. And it's the only painting that uses perspective. It leads me to believe the perspective has to be important. And that gems in a very weird place in that painting, you know, right. it's just haphazardly placed right next to a pillar I, I i think that there's all sorts of weird like there's the one column that's smooth and then the other one is is you know serrated um and it's got different it looks like a handle to to something and there, there's there's like one uh you know thing of of trim around the bottom of the frontmost pillar and then there's two on the the one farther back um i i i I don't know. I, I, I wish I did. Um, but I think there's uh, the visual markers that were in the paintings, you know, like Cleveland had the fountain or whatever. Chicago had the fence post. I think that 
as time went on, since we now know that these were painted and we're finding them in order from like uh, being simple to more complex, I think that they started to uh, get a little bit more cocky or, or maybe not cocky, but more confident in like, hey, how can we say or how can we show where it's buried by using a different methodology? Like whether it's trigonometry or, you know, he said um, geographical, astronomical, topographical, mechanical. Um, how else are they using wordplay to give us a visual representation of what something is? Every way you could think of and then some. Yes. Or <laughs> is the answer yeah. to that one. I, I mean, there's I mean. The, it's that whole the Boston Pops that we were making fun of earlier that blew my mind because we had never really looked at any of his paintings that way. We had never looked at elements of his painting trying to tell you not a story, but give you, you know, well, what is it doing? The, the Rebus, yeah. though, the Rebus, the Milwaukee is a kind of a shout out to that, you know. So uh, I have a question. OK, so. We did not come to a conclusion on whether there really are visual indicators from the image nearby where the casks are. I mean, I don't think we're gonna. And yeah. I, I mean, to say, and to say that I think John could be telling the truth in saying that he doesn't know where these are, but he can also be telling the truth and saying, like, I know there's no visual indicators i mean just because john knows what he put in these paintings doesn't necessarily mean he knows mm -hmm. where byron buried the cast exactly right? exactly he could he could look at that fence post and say yeah i put that there that fence post is important but he might not know why exactly that fence post is important exactly um so it's it's like it's it's great to see it's great to have him give interviews and it's great to hear you know his thoughts on this but it's always important to, to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt because we don't know for a fact exactly what he knows mm -hmm. you know there. we don't know if he's purposefully trying to mislead people we don't know if he we just don't know if he actually knows the answers there are people <clears throat> that never mince words JJP is a master word mincer. Yes. That's yes. the way I, I just can't, I can't get a read on him. But he's, I mean, he's just so good at hiding, hiding stuff in his, like he's, mm -hmm. he's hidden. He's, he has hidden stuff in his paintings. Uh, well, I guess since the secret, he, there's no real, like he hides skulls in his paintings, right? He hides, he hides other things in his paintings. Um, yes, but he does. I, I can't, I can't see him. I can't see him hiding secrets to the secret in a painting 20 years later. I just can't see him doing it. I don't know. Did you I guys? Think that, uh, oh, go, go ahead. Kevin. He Sorry. might. Um, I, I think he might do it as a tribute to the secret, but not like a, uh, like a, Hey, here's a little helping hint. I, I think yeah. that it, it's maybe just, um, a remembrance or an honoring of, of, you know, maybe what gave him the start to his entire career as an illustrator and a painter. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Not that to say that the secret was the start, but that was a pretty big fucking project. I think if I was like 20, what, 25, 24 straight out of fucking uh, college getting that kind of work, I would take it. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that is a huge thing to happen in anybody's career. And and you, here's the other thing. Sorry to interrupt again. Uh, the other thing is that what if he um, he uh, makes some shout out or some illusion in his painting that he doesn't realize is going to open up Pandora's box and and like cause somebody to solve it, and then he's going to be kicking himself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, did you got like, for example, he's, what did he say? Count the trees, count, count the pine trees in that yeah. painting. Right. So I counted them <laughs> just so you guys know, uh, as I'm sure. Uh, so it looks to be seven treetops. Um, one looks like a branch though, but then there's like 80 tree trunks and it's impossible to, to count those. So I don't know the hands, to me sort of looked like an allusion to San Francisco, possibly, or New York. 
there's a circle in the middle. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything in there. Somebody said that the tree trunks look like they spell out fifth. I, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I, the, the uh, another point that we're completely missing here is is a lot of things are similar in his later paintings. Like uh, there's a there's a painting he did of a train for uh, was it the Dark Tower series? I think it was a Dark Tower series. Yeah, it was a Stephen King book. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a there's a rose in it that looks exactly like the rose in San Francisco. And then he did um, a painting called uh, Satan's Dark School, where the mountains look just like the mountains in the San Francisco painting. But those mountains look just like uh, what is is it a Da Vinci painting? It's, this is another. So uh, there are similarities between his secret paintings and some of his other paintings. But is that because of his style? Or is it because he's trying to give some sort of homage? It's like once we start looking at paintings that aren't secret paintings, we're getting into a weird slippery slope. You know, there's yeah. no way for us to know what's what. I think it gets really um, uh, it's easy to get to, to complicate something that doesn't need to be complicated. Yeah. Like, what did he say about something being complex, but not complicated yes or, or something yeah I, I think that 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 is one of the biggest hints that uh he could give us in in the secret totally totally i think you're are you talking about um george the uh, da vinci virgin yes in the rock this is the virgin on the rocks virgin and <laughs> the rocks virgin martini the rocks. on the on the rocks something like that yeah. <laughs> uh virgin in the rock or virgin virgin of the rocks Yes. And Kit would know yeah. this. Yep. I, 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 yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those. Yeah. I mean, I can't, we can't figure out these 12 paintings. I don't want to try to figure out 200 no. more. Yes. I just no. don't right. want to do it. But, um, oh. I, and, and I, I, I but I'm going to agree with your conclusion, George, I think that you said earlier, which is like, it's, un, it's kind of unreasonable to think that he's been doing, you know, he's been hiding super obscure clues in all of his paintings for 40 years now as a shout out to the secret. I mean, he, you know, he moved on at some point and if you can find something that helps you, you know, more power to you. Yeah. But like I said, I I can't figure out the 12. I don't want to figure out the 200 others. Uh, he, he did tell, he he did tell, uh, Josh Gates though. He was closer than he's ever been in Milwaukee, Mm -hmm. which was rather interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I would go on national TV and say that unless I knew it for a fact. That was interesting. I, I felt like it, like he was actually telling him you were close for yeah. one of the first times I've heard him say something. I was actually convinced that the thing he was saying was actually not in jest or have some double entendre. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was just being honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were close. Which is cool actually it was a pretty pretty nice i mean i was convinced it was there anyway but it's a pretty nice piece of well i mean i think it did something that he didn't realize it was going to do where it cemented a verse with a painting and a city and a park like it took to me anyway that one little comment took all of those arguments off the table now all of a sudden that verse is with that painting and it goes to milwaukee in that park well you know what else it does is it flies in the face of the concept that he doesn't know where any of them are buried. Well, maybe, but it, it could also be, he knows that that lion is important. He knows that he painted that lion. And since Josh Gates was close to that lion, he's closer than he's ever been before because he knows the things that he painted in Charleston aren't, you know, it, like Josh Gates wasn't close to anything that he painted in Charleston and Josh Gates wasn't close to anything that he painted in San Francisco, but he knows that he painted that lion, you know? So Josh had to be on the right track. Yes. And the only way you can get to that lion is with that painting and that verse. It makes perfect sense with that painting and that verse. Mm-hmm. I agree. <clears throat> I agree with that, but I just, there's still some contradictions going on here, but Hey, it's come complex but not complicated yeah right so i guess this is what we're what we have to work with he sure whipped those words out like he had them scripted didn't he the mathematical optical astronomical geographical type like he was rapping topographical like a like a hamilton (laughs) we were watching hamilton it was amazing yeah Um, jjp was channeling his inner black alicious yeah that's a rapper for those who don't know (laughs) 
he uh it was cool salt and it pepper was cool. lyrics or something <clears throat> yeah um yeah i just i man it was a good interview it was a really good interview i think but i think like people are gonna take what they want from it you know like we're we got our opinions other people have their opinions nothing we say is going to change anybody else's opinion so i don't know does does each puzzle have one of these words associated with it that that would be interesting i mean we can point out we can point out a lot of stuff right mm-hmm. um optics n- new york obviously has some some optics there's optical some stuff going optical on. play there for sure yeah um uh charleston charleston it seems like you have to manipulate the painting in some way view it at some yeah. sort of angle that could be mechanical i you know everything in the world's got historical in it they've all got moons so what are the moon nobody's ever figured out what the moons mean um mathematical i'm i'm lost if there's a mathematical puzzle i'm done i can't i can't do it well it might be something simple like uh uh add up these these numbers and divide them by how many columns there are or or some shit Mm -hmm. and like get a number. Who knows? You just have to be, I guess, open and willing to, to try anything and and, and everything. Pretty much, pretty much. There's no method to the madness. So we've got to, we've got to try everything, but yeah, that would be cool. Or you, you know, you just add up nine, eight and two and, do, do something with yeah, it. Yeah, do some <laughs> shit with that, and then you get a fucking big, yeah. big spot. You know, the painting opens up in the book like some, you know, da, 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 origami da. bird, and you know, <laughs> right. Here's your prize. Congratulations. Um, well, so, but I thought, I but didn't you guys feel like? I'm sorry if I interrupted somebody. No, no, no. Okay, didn't you guys feel like that came off though really smoothly and like he like almost like it was he was reading it from a piece of paper, but I was watching him and he wasn't reading anything. He could have been that could have been take twelve though. Like we have no idea what True. was on that cutting room floor. It's magic. Like, yeah. Well, when he talks about something that he knows and understands, he rattles that shit off so fast. Um, because it's it's something that is true. He's not one of uh, he, he's not one to read off of a script or type stuff up beforehand and then read it. Um, not to say he's unprepared, but um, you know there are, uh, countless times I remember him rushing to get ready because he had to be at the airport and he's got to be at this gate you know at this time and I gotta take him there and now my schedule's fucked because I gotta you know t- whatever. <laughs> um, I don't um, think preparedness is is something that is incredibly important to him you're always prepared when you know what you're talking about right right yes that's a yeah. wonderful point he's he's prepared but he's not scripted yeah is what you're correct what you're getting at um and then uh this was i don't think we talked about this yet uh what about the order of the fines and that's the, interesting Right? That's super interesting. That is really cool. And he thinks, I, I, he thinks or he knows Roanoke is next. Well, it was next in the order that he painted. I, mm-hmm. I don't know if he went into the, the order of the difficulty. I don't necessarily know if he painted them in order of difficulty. But like Kit was saying earlier, as you go through and create puzzles, you learn new tricks and you try out new things. And, and it would follow that, you know, they're learning more stuff. They're putting more stuff in them. They're going to get harder as they go along. So it kind of does follow that the next one would be the next hardest. Mm-hmm. And that would be Roanoke, apparently. Hmm. Hmm. Which means it's supposed to be super easy and we're just dumb. Or fourth, <laughs> fourth, um, fourth easiest. Yeah. Right? For, yeah. Fourth yeah. easiest. Fourth yeah. easiest. But the, yeah, I, I guess, but it's so, look, Boston gets found with a, <clears throat> I guess, I don't know. It depends on what you think about the proposed solve that we have. Um, part of me thinks that Boston got solved with a backhoe and a construction yeah. crew. Yeah. How does that play into his order? And I know Jason was down there and said, yeah, hey, this is, you know, keeping the, an, an eye out for this. And this is where I think it is. And this is why. And that's fine. But still, you know, I mean. We've got we got we got thousands of people now that are looking for these things. You know, it's not just yeah. the the twenty dudes on Q for T anymore. Right. There's thousands of people out there looking for these things, and it took an excavator to find this one. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. And the one before that was on the opposite side of the planet than where it was supposed to be. Oh, so I, I, I don't know. These are. What did we get ourselves into? I have this no is idea. ridiculous. Ugh. Kit, tell us, tell us the answers. Yes. Uh, all of them. All of okay. them. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, Florida. It's uh, the GPS coordinates are. Hold on. Let me. This is um, happening. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wish I, uh, you know, I don't wish I knew. No, no, um, no. Yeah. It would take away. It would take away the magic. Right. Yeah. So, so Kit, we've had you on the podcast a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and we've always talked about your dad. Um, and we've never talked about you. Uh, and, and I would love to, if you're willing. Um, Sure, I'm open the, to. I don't really. I, I mean, this is your podcast. I, I mean, you guys talk about the secret, and I try to separate myself from um, uh, being biased towards you know my dad. Or I, I don't want to talk about me the whole time, you know, or or anything yeah. like that. Um, well, there's one thing that I'm I'm curious about. The people that that worked on this book have all stayed very far away from it. Uh, JJP is the probably the closest to going public with anything. Trilling doesn't ever mention it uh uh, sean and ted don't ever mention it um overton lloyd doesn't ever mention it um but you i mean i know you didn't work on the secret but you sort of grew up with it in a way you you grew up with these paintings in your house Mm -hmm. and you have gotten interested and i'm kind of curious why you're interested in the secret is it because your dad worked on it and you want to sort of know about his work and his process or is the, the puzzle just do you just want to solve the puzzle i i just want to know how to hide things in paintings that people don't know are there but you know that they're there um yeah. i i think that symbolism and um uh you know, certain subtleties in artwork are like those, uh, I, I always wanted to have those aha moments in my work where it's like, you look at something, you're like, Oh, that that's new to me. I, I didn't see that before. And that's what keeps you, um, uh, thinking about, uh, a painting or an image or, or something that you dream about is like the, those aha moments. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I'm trying to work on hiding stuff and, in my my own artwork whether it's about religion i've been getting into a lot and um you know having things meaning certain things that you know i interpret them as and i I picked religion because i grew up catholic and um i i think it's something that i i know i have faith in but i'm questioning it all the time so i i try to put my own spin on it whether um like i there's a charcoal drawing behind me of um, uh, it was a lesson for my drawing class at the University of Akron. It was uh, a canvas drop cloth up on the wall, and it was a, a lesson about light and 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 um, you know what happens when light hits a form. And I did this drawing, and you know my students were packing up their stuff and leaving because class was over. But I didn't care. I just kept drawing through because I was like, this is fucking awesome. I could do this all day. And you know, I finished it in like, I don't know, another hour or so I stayed after to finish it. And um, I, I called it the, uh, I called it Turin because it's uh, my take on the Shroud of Turin, which is the cloth that, you know, Jesus's face is imprinted on. But do I buy that? I, I don't know. It could just be a, a cloth. You know, you have to look into things and you have to believe them and, you know, there might not be a hidden face in there. There might be. Who who knows? You know, I could have put something in there. Um, you know, it might just be up to your interpretation of it. The faith is what makes religion important, right? I mean, without yes. faith, it's just a book. But with faith, it could mean anything. It, it That's what makes it special. Right. And so I, I guess um, I think it's all about interpretation for me i guess and i don't i don't even know i can't remember the original question that you asked um, <laughs> or if we're totally off topic now um well it was but, about catholic school kit could you tell us about catholicism oh yeah you know i went into the confessional booth a couple times and um you know it was uh 
it's a fun, it's a fun time. Um, Rachel's nah. Catholic. It's a, it's a religion I've never, I've never understood. Like I, I love religion. I'm not a religious person by any means, but I love religion. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Catholicism is, uh, it's fascinating. To me it's an interesting I don't one under, for sure. I don't understand any of it, but it's fascinating. Yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, oh, the question was what growing up in these, you well, know, no, why do I, I look at these things or why do I yeah, hunt? Yeah. Why do you hunt? What got you into it? Other than, you know, wanting to understand your dad's work more. I don't know because I can't legally hunt for this stuff and go and dig it up. And I can't pursue this because if I did, that means, you know, uh, my dad told me something about this and this is where it's buried. Um, Not to confirm or deny that he knows where these things are because i don't think he he does he might have some general area that he knows but he doesn't know exactly where um i i i'm hunting for this for this stuff and i i love looking for it because it's so it's such a mystery it's like i want to know how these things were done i've always been a um a researcher i've always been a learner i wish i could still be in school even though i'm done and i have two degrees i wish i could still be in school because i love to learn uh my brother and i when we were little um he's four years older than me so when i was i don't know eight or nine and he was you know 12 13 14 we would take apart vcrs boom boxes and we'd put them back together we'd learn how stuff worked we would dissect things and um I, I still do that. You know, I tinker with computers. I, I tinker with airsoft guns. I, I, I don't really play with airsoft guns anymore because I, I don't know. I, I don't have anywhere to go with them. Um, I, but I still take them apart and I still learn how they work. And I put them back together. Um, so I, I think it's just these are, are paintings that I want to know how they, they work. Um, and... You know, I, I I sometimes lose track of time when I look at these and I get off on weird tangents where I, I have like 10 tabs open right now of like, um, you know, Camel Cigarettes and RJ Reynolds Company and where are they located, uh, you know, South Mountain State Park. Uh, I'm looking at that now. It's in fucking, I don't even know where this is, uh, by Charlotte, North Carolina. Is this where the Houston painting? Who? I, I don't know. I'm just looking at shit. And I think that's maybe the goal of the secret is you figure out one thing and it takes you to some part of, of you, the United States where there was an important thing in history that it encourages you to research about what happened in that area or why it was important. And I think that's what my dad was talking about when he said, um, you know, geographical, topographical, mechanical, historical, there are these things that, um, you are kind of getting tricked into learning about and researching. That's about how we are a nation, how we are, you know, what kind of laws do we have? Um, I, I'm thinking about like the Pythagorean theorem, you know, is that in any of these paintings, that's a, a Galileo, you know, what's maybe, maybe the Roanoke one is about Galileo looking up into the stars or so through this window, this telescope and, and, seeing meteors and, 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 you know, is it Jupiter or, you know, what did Galileo discover? Uh, That's what I am thinking about all these important figures through history um, that we are tricked into learning about because there's this incentive of finding a gemstone and, and being remembered for solving the secret. And that's the beauty of this thing in general that you just uh, laid out there right? Is that this thing is not only timeless, but it's got this mystique to it that draws you in and drives you crazy, you know? And I think, I, I think that the, the more people that get introduced to it, the, the bigger that this thing is growing. Um, and I, you know, I can see, I can Look, I don't like it when people go on the Facebook page and say I 100% solved this, but I could see why they would. I mean, I want 100% solve something too. You know what I mean? And and I get thrilled when I find something new in here. It's like if you find one little thing in this, 
it's historic. You are forever a hero. Like the, you know, finding the, um, the longitude and latitude, right. Um, that is Robert Fox, right. Um, uh, Phoenix found, right. John Hardipe found the, found the leg eater. No, someone else did, but he someone found enough did. stuff in Montreal where it, you could, yeah. 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 Citadel and, and things like that. But, um, point being, I want to be there. I want to find I don't know. something cool. <laughs> I don't know if it's that, man. I think, it, you know, with the people who, who come out and are like, you know, I solved everything. Give me Josh Gates' phone number. I'm going to be famous and I'm going to be t- on TV. It's that, right? Yeah. But I think for everybody else, even some of the, oh, my God, I solved this. It's undeniable. I think what's driving them is what Kit was saying. It's knowing how these work. It's the mystery. Mm-hmm. You know, you get so involved in this. You want to know how it works. You want to learn everything. And once you think you figured it out, you get so excited that you have to tell everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that trips people up sometimes because they don't realize, you know, not everybody thinks the same way. Mm-hmm. So they go on Facebook and like, I solved this. It's undeniable. Yeah. And don't and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's awesome that people do that. I'm just I'm just <laughs> saying I can understand an iota yeah. of where where they're coming from because this yeah, thing totally is is uh so mesmerizing and so enveloping like i just learned about this i think george you told me about it and it was like f- five or six years ago something like yeah. that maybe not even that long i don't go a day without thinking about it and i and and i dream about it <laughs> <laughs> to my detriment so uh kit right there with you it's 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 really weird i, I don't get it this is nobody gets it. I, I mean, somebody does somewhere, but like, and you know, you're, you're now that BP is gone. Your dad is, he's it. He's it. He's what we got. He's the, he's the, like the keeper of not even all of the secrets. And, and I feel so bad. I, I feel so bad for him because he's a genuinely sweet dude, you know? And yeah. like, like you were saying before, um, days ago it doesn't matter what you talk to him about it doesn't matter what anyone talks to him about he has always got to keep in the back of his mind these people could just be using me Mm -hmm. you know and that's got to suck for somebody that somebody like your dad to always be second guessing everything you know yeah hey hi i I guess i guess we should do another weird intro like this is part two of the new episode of the secret podcast which is weird we kicked a kid off and now we have bradley yo yo uh, so, so now we can talk about all the stuff that we couldn't talk about with kid on what's yeah, up bradley so, what's up what's up so I, i'm i'm severely disappointed that john wick was not a uh option in the count of reeves movies because that's the obvious number mm. one. Oh, no. mm, dude no. really I, I, I wouldn't even say John Wick's a Keanu Reeves movie. Like Keanu Reeves what? movies have a, have, they have a vibe <laughs> and he, he's just, a, he's a good actor in those movies, but he's not a good actor in the others. Like, you know why he's good in the matrix guys is because he barely says anything. He just looks good and does action stuff and fights yeah. people and like takes pills in his mouth covers yeah. over with his skin. That's why he's his, good. There's- his dialogue consists of like, I, I know Kung Fu. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was about to say. That's the one line everybody knows. I know Kung Fu. Um, yeah, totally. So, so I have questions for everybody. Oh boy. How much do we think Palancar was just flat out screwing with everyone? A hundred percent. No question about it. He, th- <sighs> there's no way he put hints in the other paintings. That was a total troll. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see like I, I, I could see that I could see nods, you know, and I could see like um, like when I draw something, if I draw a flower, the next time I draw a flower is going to be kind of similar. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you draw things the same way. Um, I could see that. I could see little nods. Um, the the painting, the uh, Muse and Reverie. It's got a casket. I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's a nod. It's got a box with a lid off of it. I've never read the book. I don't know what it's about, but it's a stretch saying it's definitely a cask. Okay. All right. Uh, definitely is not a word. Yeah. I, that I would, but that I would, yeah, use. but nod. I just don't think, 
Possibly. I don't think the man's. I don't think the man spent the last forty years going. I need to put every hint that I can in all of my paintings. No, right? Like I don't. I don't no. think he's like. I'm going to put the map of Lake Park in this tree limb. I just. I can't see him doing that. Not at all. I, I don't see him sitting down working on a piece that he's been commissioned for and going, hmm. Now, what am I going to put about the secret in this one? How can I make this for the five or six thousand people that are on the Facebook page? What can I do to service them? I don't think he's, yeah, I don't, I'm pretty sure he's not, he's not doing that. Especially like the first 20 years of this, like or the first 30 years of this, it wasn't even, it wasn't popular. He didn't really even know people care. That's exactly right. You can totally ignore the first couple of decades at least. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe as it's gained a little steam, maybe the, the nods and the painting thing, I think the jury is out on yeah. that. I don't know. I'm not taking it I seriously guess, anyway. I guess we'll find out. What we can use his paintings for, as far as hints for the secrets, if you want to call it that, is looking at his style, looking at things that he paints, how he paints them, and compare that to how he's painted them in the secret paintings, and then look for the obvious differences. For instance, somebody uh, posted uh, in the Facebook group about um, one of the images. I think it's Kid or his brother um, was the model. He's on a horse. Um He's holding a shield and wearing armor. It's like, okay, yes, we can look at this horse and look at the horse in the St. Augustine painting and see this is how he paints horses. Now, what's the obvious differences? Those are what we need to pay attention to. Yeah. 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 I, totally yeah, agree, I agree with that. Uh, stylistically, um, real hints for the secret, though, like legit, like count the trees. Oh, there are seven tree tops. The, um, image seven, which actually is not named image seven anywhere. Like, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, I don't no, think no. it's that stretchy. No, He's screwed with but him. you know, I mean, it's, it, I guess it's up to the viewer to decide, but I, 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 I really feel like we, we can't figure out the first 12 paintings. I don't want to spend <laughs> the next 10 years trying to figure out 40 more because this man paints. Oh my God, this man paints so many paintings. I know. You know? All of our attention now is going to go into a into another painting. I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it. I looked at it. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Did I did I try to find like yes? Did I did I count the treetops, think there were seven, and think that it was San Francisco based or something? Yeah, of course I did. But that and then I I'm glad I. Uh, and then you came to your senses. Then I woke up. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was fantastic. I mean, I did. I did shoot out an email and ask to have some a little bit of clarification from the horse's mouth. We're mm. still waiting on that. The dude's mm. busy, Ooh. I guess. But um, we we should have a little bit of clarification, maybe. Um, I think. Uh, what What do you? What Bradley? What do you think about the um, the 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 dig? the dig site identifiers that's actually exactly what i have next on my notes to talk about so thank you for asking me um so yeah so um i so i've listened to the previous conversation uh, that you guys had with kit and the logic that got tossed around uh, between all three of you and um so does he know where these are buried does that mean that he does or doesn't uh if he does or doesn't know that these are in the paintings i i agree with the logic that yes he can say no there are not dig site indicators in all the paintings without actually knowing where all the casts are buried because he was sent the hints he knows what he put in the paintings so it would seem to me that especially if one of the paintings is a puzzle type that uh you know he was throwing out there like astrological um then you know there's something we've got to figure out to find the dig site it's maybe verse heavy versus painting heavy um so he can know that without knowing where they're buried i agree with that logic wholeheartedly i've talked to the man um and i have a i have a feeling that i can somewhat decipher whenever he's joshing and when he's and okay no pun intended when he's kidding around um or whenever he's like this is this is my answer because this is the truth and when he said, no, you're absolutely wrong, I feel like he was being honest. Um, I feel like we now know that some of the paintings don't have dig indicators. We don't know which ones they are, um, but we know that if they don't have dig indicators, then that means they're probably very verse heavy and the solved. I think there are things that we know about these paintings, right? There are things that we know, like each painting tells you a city in one way or another. 
each painting tells you a city, right? Latitude, longitude, coordinates, rebuses. In some way, we know that each painting tells you here is your city. Um, and in, in, there's a category, there's two categories. There's the things we know about the painting, things that we don't. And I think for the, for the longest time we had the dig indicator and the things we know. And I think there's enough doubt now that we should take it and put it in the things, you know, things we don't know. Like maybe like New York doesn't have a lot of stuff going on. We've, we've, we've been able to find what three or four things that we can say. That's obviously that in New York. Maybe it doesn't have an indicator that shows you exactly where to dig. I I cannot reconcile the thing the things that I said before the two the two trains of logic. One, we've been operating all this time and actually preaching that stop bugging JJP. He doesn't know where the where the actual casks are buried. Okay, the question was: Are there dig spot indicators? Now, he could incorporate dig spot indicators well, in his paintings without knowing the spot. There's a lot of what ifs here. Like we're we're basing all of our assumptions on what we assume JJP used to paint these paintings. We don't know. Right. Was he just given little things like here, paint a painting with the, these four things in it? He has no idea why those things are important. He just painted a painting with those four things. I get, I get the feeling from his interview that he knows more than that. But so, if we're taking him at his word, and he he says the, there are all these different ways that you need to approach these puzzles, um, then that tells me that he knows the process, but he doesn't necessarily know the end result. And if he knows the process that well, then that tells me that while he doesn't know the end result, he knows enough to know that the dig indicators are not necessarily in each painting for a very good reason. Because that's not what you're looking for. I mean, even if you look mm-hmm. at Boston, right? I mean, the only thing in Boston was the home plate that was hidden, right? The home plate and the baseball field, kind of. But the the there none of the other things we're looking for are in the painting to let us know that we're in the right place. Yes, the word Boston, you know, just to get us a general mm-hmm. area. But if you think of Cleveland, your dig site is in the painting. If you think of Chicago, your dig site is in the painting. How would you incorporate a dig spot into cater into your painting without knowing more or less what the dig spot is is that just byron price saying hey i buried it you know telling him verbally right not providing any pictures or something like that just telling him verbally like uh, uh, um i put it near this statue so this statue this statue's arm needs to go there well okay so let's take like new york for example right Um, It could be. This is total hypothetical, obviously. None of us know for sure. But just going with your line of thought, Byron reaches out to him and says, okay, here's the deal. It's in New York. And this is what I need you to put in this painting. I need you to put something that looks like the Statue of Liberty. I need you to get people in the New York state of mind. My verse is going to get them there. But this is what I need you to put in there. Something that I, I, I go back to. Um, by now, uh, Palancar and Josh Gates, they've talked a little bit. They've been on shows together. They're friends, right? So Palancar is going to be a little, he's going to play a little more with Josh, right? But not so much in the first episode. In the first episode, they didn't really know each other. Dude was just doing an interview, right? And he said, uh, his quote from the first interview was, I've tried to figure out some of these and even, I don't know, I, even I can't figure them out. And if he can't figure them out, that leads me to believe he doesn't like Brett was saying, he doesn't know the process. Right. And if he doesn't know the process, I, I, I he follows that he wouldn't know where to dig. It, it, it he might, he might know uh, uh, where to like around, like it's around this general area. Like he might know Milwaukee is somewhere in Lake park, but he doesn't know where in Lake park. I, I, I'm taking him at his word. I don't think he knows where they are. And I don't think he, if he knows, necessarily whether there are dig spot indicators in every painting that's just that's just what i take from the whole situation i I take him at his word when he says there are different ways that each one needs to be approached and he gave us you know a, a, a rather long list i take i take i take that to be factual whether or not there's some extra ones thrown in just to make it more difficult which i don't doubt sounds very jjp to me to do so but for him to know he can know the processes without knowing the end result. He can know that, okay, for these three puzzles, the process is 
the they're gonna have to figure out that the the it's in this city and then follow my painting um uh, and, and actually know uh, that this is here uh for instance the let's let's talk about cleveland right so he knows he knew the process of cleveland it was his city he put in in, in my opinion put that together um so he knows how that works and he knows knows the dig spot and he knows that his image is integral into that seek the columns for your search um Pindar Apelles, like all of these are things that he knows were there. He knows what you need to find to get to there. Now, New York, totally different story. He may know the process that you have to go through to find it, but he may not know where it is because half of that process, the the the, the solve was on Byron's side, not his side. Gotcha. Yeah. So what you're saying is that he could know whether there is a dig spot indicator even in in a image even if he doesn't know where the dig spot is i think what bradley's trying to say he's he know he could know how the verse works but he doesn't know where the verse works right he can he can have the equation but not have all the variables to solve the equation does that make sense okay all right all right i don't know i'm going i'm going simple i don't think he i don't think he knows where they all are i think there's enough there's enough gray area here where we take this out of the we know this pile yeah for sure for sure I think, yeah, operative phrase. I mean, the but the best part about this episode is that I know that Roanoke is going to be the next one found. So I mean, there's that <laughs> because everything's going in order. So that's the best part of this the the episode for me. Well, I'm going to find San Francisco before that, so it's a race. You you can't friend. do yeah. that. You can't do that. You'll throw the whole system I off. I can and I will, my friend. It's written in the stars. Okay, that's that's astronomical. It is astrological. All right. Sorry. It's another ickle. It's, it's those, an ickle. Those ickles, those ickles screwed up the Facebook group, man. Oh my God. He ickled the hell out of us, didn't he? We got ickled. We did. All right. I need to go get a beer. Give me two seconds. I'm getting a beer. This is like way too much for me to handle. Hold on. I'm back. Sorry, uh, Lyle snaked me for for a minute. Okay, cool. You got your beer. I don't remember what we were talking about. Uh, we're talking about Roanoke being the next one to be found because that is the correct order. Oh, okay. So San Francisco is going to be the next one to be found. No. So wait. So I mean, do 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 we take him at his word? Because I mean, that would be bizarre for him just to make that up, right? Like he likes to fuck with people. Yeah. How does he remember what order he painted these? I mean, I remember what order. I oh, I, th- I think you'd remember that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That's fair. I'm not a painter. 40 years ago, I can barely remember what my name was back then. It might have been the same. It might have been different. I don't remember. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, how- okay. So, okay. So let's say he remembers that. But he also remembers the order of difficulty. I mean, so let's go back kind of to what. Yeah, you're about yeah. to say the same thing as me. He must know the process. No, that's that's that, that's not what I was going to say. I don't know. I don't remember if we touched on it. This is going to suck because I don't remember we touched on it the other day. It makes sense that they would be figuring these things out as they go along. It makes sense that they would be figuring out how to make puzzles as they go along. So if you're doing them in a certain order, it makes sense that they're going to get harder the farther down you go because they're going to be figuring out new ways to trick people. They're going to be figuring out new ways to lead people to certain things, right? They're going to be hiding new stuff in paintings. So it makes sense that the order he painted them is the order of difficulty just because they're just figuring out new things. Cause he even said he, and he said before, like he, he had a process with Byron, right? Like he would, he would do a sketch and then Byron would say, well, why don't you put this in it? And then John would come up with an idea and he would be like, well, this would be a cool way to hide something then that idea could carry over and he could have new ideas. It, it makes sense. I think one of my, uh, my one of my favorite moments of um, JJP and talking at the paintings was when we were talking about the um, the paintings on Exhibition Unknown on the first episode and how they were in the background and how we discovered there were things in the paintings that we didn't know were there because they were covered up in the book. And he, the, the, I mean, the honest expression on his face was, holy shit, I didn't, really, I didn't even think about that until this moment. And so we had a conversation about that and uh, why those got covered up. And one of his responses was, uh, 
I was being bad. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was being a bad boy. I didn't follow directions. Oh my god. Okay, so okay, here's another thing then. So are this sounds like you two guys are confirming that there is an order of difficulty to these. I can't confirm anything. Like okay. I have no idea. Well, but you're arguing that right now. I mean, I would assume. I, I believe he knows the order in which they were painted, uh, but I don't know if. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, okay, yes, uh, because I do believe he knows the procedure and or the 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 equation, as I said earlier, but not the variables. So yeah, I think he, you know, x plus y is painting one, but then you need cosines and all this other crap. You need a TI eighty one to figure out the um, you know, the the twelfth painting. Who knows? Okay. Okay. But all right. So in order for there to be an order of difficulty, there would have to be some sort of memorable legend for that. Don't you think? Like, Not really. How, okay. So he just remembers off the top of his head. All right. So I'm, I'm going to make a comment for Brett. I'm going to make a comment for Brett, but it's going to need, I'm going to need a, l- a little preface so that other people understand what we're talking about here. Brett and I used to work on puzzles together. We made puzzles together with it with a team. It wasn't just me and Brett. It was several people, but we made puzzles. Brett, do you remember when we used to work on those and how we would come up with things sort of as time went on? We didn't necessarily have a plan to make things harder, but we would come up with new ideas as a team. Like puzzle two would ultimately be harder than puzzle one because we came up with a new idea. Bro, I can't even remember like what I did 20 minutes ago. Are you kidding me? No, no, I do. Okay. Yes. Yes. But okay. That was maybe three or four years ago, right? Just bear with me. Bear with me. A couple of years ago. It's not 40 years ago, a couple of years ago. Can you name for me the order of difficulty uh, and, and the, and the um, remembering it by name? No. Uh, the, the, do you see what I'm saying? The the astronomical leap we need to take here for him to okay, unless there is a simple uh, legend by which the the, uh, the these are these are rated by difficulty, like the gem, right? And maybe he just has the the gem for the city the more expensive it is and he memorized the order of that maybe that's a totally legit thing i don't i don't know i think going back to to bradley's point if you were to take all of those puzzles and put them down in front of me and i know the process of how to solve them but not necessarily the the parts that you got to put together but if i know the process i think i could order them for you and that's something that jjp has that we don't have he's got a visual to remember he's got the paintings that he made so he can sit there in his head and go, the process for this was this, that was the easy one. And then this one came next because we did X. And then this one came next because we did Y. Okay. But that still necessitates a, a w- this is what I'm getting at. I, and, and I, I love it. I love hearing this because what I want is for there to truly be some figure outable legend or path to these things. Do you see what I'm saying? So like, I hope, I hope that that's the case in the, yeah, I see what you're saying in the puzzles that we're, we're used to, there would be a path. There would be a way. I don't know how to explain that to other people though. An incremental, you would take something from number one, you would build on it from number two, you would build on it for number three. They would have different yeah. processes, but in general, you were learning as you went, right. Or you were taking something from the previous puzzles. So I, 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 I'm overthinking it. I, I know. I know. No, 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 no. It just reminds me of a quest for treasure uh, thread. <laughs> I have never been, I've never been on there. So obviously I wasn't a part of your guys' team building these puzzles. So I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I get the gist of the conversation, but I can tell you that recently I was lucky enough to have a puzzle maker reach out to me and they were like, Hey, we're putting together this. We want to run it by you. We want to get some feedback. Um, so they sent me their initial thoughts and they're like, okay, you know, this is what we've got so far. Uh, what do you think? Um, and my wife and I worked on it a little bit and we were able to figure out some of the elements, some of the elements we had no clue what was going on. And we gave them the feedback and the you know, thoughts that we had. And uh, based off of that, they were able to understand, okay, you know, and me as the puzzle master, 
I understand where everything was going because I built this puzzle. But now that they got the feedback from me, then they were like, okay, now I understand that while I thought this, that doesn't really make sense from a reader standpoint. So I can alter this and change it in this way to make it more difficult or to make it more challenging or to make it more relevant. And as we worked together, the puzzle kind of grew um, into something, you know, it morphed, it evolved. Um, so I, I get the gist from the conversation you guys are having that it's somewhat similar that as you're working on these puzzles, they're morphing, they're evolving, you're learning, um, you know, how to put them together, how to make them uh, more challenging, maybe, maybe just more doable, who knows, but they're evolving as you work on it. Yeah. Okay. So totally. And you're, you're hitting the nail on the head to make a puzzle with several parts. So not just a one piece puzzle right? Or challenge or what adventure, whatever it happens to be. It has to have a thread. Do you get what I'm saying? Like George, you, you know, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. They have to be connected in some way. They have to be connected because otherwise it's just a bunch of different puzzles, but there has to be a thread, right? So it's just interesting and exciting to me to hear that there, there's at least one thread for the puzzle sol- solving part of it itself not just these are um these are these are part of uh this fairy lore that's just yeah. that's just an overarching story theme i'm talking about a, a a verse and an image and the fact that there's some sort of correlation between the difficulty to these me, means to me that they're, they're i mean and it's memorable to to jjp after all this time means to me that there's some that there's some thread and they aren't just little individual things, I, I guess. I don't know. I'm yeah. belaboring the point. So the, the thing that we have that we had the benefit of that, that JJP and Byron didn't have the benefit of was feedback, right? We, we were able to connect those things because we, like Bradley was saying, saw how people are solving them. Uh, JJP and Byron didn't have, they didn't have that. They released their 12 puzzles all at once. You know, and it was their first time making puzzles. So did they have the forethought to think about how to lead from one into the other? Or was it like, I, I know I have to give these people certain information. I know I have to give them a, uh, I know I have to give them a city. I know I have to maybe give them a state. I know I have to narrow down the city a little bit and I'll figure out how to do that. Uh, one way in the first painting, but I can't do that the same way in the second painting. So I got to figure out another way, but the easiest way was my first idea. So that's going to be the first painting. And then it's going to get a little harder. I think that line of that line of thought makes sense. And here's why. So let's take what we know, right? So we, we, we know Chicago was first uh, from what we believe to be true, or at least I believe to be true. Chicago was also the first painting. Chicago is also the easiest. Chicago has, a ridiculous amount of landmark hints in the painting, like a ridiculous amount, including um, the, uh, you know, a major building, uh, major, um, uh, the, the water tower, the major, um, uh, like the, 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 uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, The fence and fixture, the Bowman. Well, well, I was going to say the fence fixture last because that really, I mean, it's got the dig spot, but yeah, the Bowman major, um, uh, points of interest, I guess you could say. I, I, there's a word that I, I can't come up with right now, but um, so many visual clues. And then when you go to the verse, the only thing that the verse didn't tell you was what these letters stand for. You figure out what the letters stand for. It tells you exactly how to get there and exactly where it's buried. I mean, it's 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 it, it's definitely the easiest. Um, then we look at the next one that was found. And if we believe everything that we've been told to be true, then okay. Again, the painting has not as many, uh, but a lot of image uh, site image indicators, uh, including the exact dig spot. And then the verse is pretty straightforward. Um, but finding that area is going to be a little bit more difficult, in my opinion. I don't think uh, you know, as many people are going to know about the cultural Greek, uh, the cultural Greek gardens as they are going to know about downtown Chicago. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, that's a good point. Um, so it's just ever so slightly difficult, but so similar. Then we get to Boston. Okay, so there are a lot of things pointing us to Boston in general, 
but the only thing really pointing us in the image to the dig spot is the home plate and Boston is big on baseball. So it doesn't tell us where to go. There's no one home plate that that can look like. Even if we pick up on the baseball field in the hair, that doesn't take us to one particular place. There's nothing in this painting that says it is Pupalo Park. Um, nothing. There, there's nothing in there that takes us to the exact dig spot. We've got to rely on the verse and we've got to figure out what the verse means. And there's still a line from the verse, no matter how you want to talk about the verse and how you get to the X, we still don't know what the last line in the verse is really there for. It's all kind of up to, yeah, it could be this, it could be that. Um, is there a reason for that line? We don't know. Um, we would, probably will never know, uh, but it's, it's there. And then if we follow everything that JJP has said to be true, then Roanoke is going to be our next most difficult. So if we look at Roanoke, we've got a map of the island, right? And that's going to be incredibly less known unless you are a history buff and you've looked up this. The only people that are going to recognize that map of the island are people that have been or live near Roanoke Island. And you're not going to see that and go, oh my God, that's Roanoke Island. Other than that, there's really nothing else in the image that says this is where we need to go. There's no major buildings um, there's no major sites around the area. There's not the Wright Brothers Memorial. Yeah, it's arguably that there's a top down of the Wright Brothers Memorial. Yes, I, I, I'll buy that. But there's nothing. You lose a lot of visual indicators. And then it's very verse heavy. Well, it's arguable that it, the mace is the Wright Brothers Memorial. But just following along your line of thought, that thing is so tiny. You would almost have to know what you were looking for to find it. Right. Right. You would have to be in the area to go, oh, that, that's kind of similar to the Wright Brothers Memorial. Yeah, exactly. And then we have images that mean things that are not landmarks. Like, OK, you say the mace looks like it. And some people think that I don't agree with that. Um, I think it's Samuel Mace. Um, and that's uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that either. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's arguable. Right. It's arguable. But and so now we're transitioning. Right. We're not looking at the painting just for image locators. We're not looking at the painting to say okay well there's this building there's this water fountain we're looking at the painting we're like okay well, here's a mace we've got roanoke island uh we've got this island samuel mace we look up mace we've I, I, you know whoever you come up to it um you know i was lucky enough that this was already pinpointed to roanoke island what i've ever found out otherwise i seriously doubt it so i feel very grateful for the people that put the footwork in <laughs> beforehand mm -hmm. but do you get what i'm saying that yes. now we're working with a different style of puzzle but somewhat evolved from the previous three, not completely off base, but slightly harder. If there's any more wordplay in these images, like in Boston, we're screwed. Right. I mean, Boston, Bo like if there's any more Boston Globes or Boston Pops, we're just screwed. I guess, I guess one way that we could figure this out, uh, not figure this out, but one approach we could take is like, what were the hardest pieces of what they did for the for, for the three solved ones quote unquote solved and take the hardest pieces and try to apply that moving moving forward to the to to Roanoke let's just go to Roanoke and you know what i mean yeah i think the wordplay is is definitely in my opinion the hardest like when you talk about fill at home never occurred to me that that was home plate never no. occurred to me but now I'm like, okay, okay, I see, I see what you did there. So let yeah. me look at, let me look at the Roanoke puzzle. Oh, okay, after circle and square, first scene standing, last touch. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's all baseball. I don't it think it's all be. baseball. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> but I mean, the 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 relevancy of and, and uh, kudos, by the way, to everybody on the main page, but especially to my heart, the people on the Roanoke page, all the work that's being done recently kudos to all of you i'm you guys i'm not gonna lie i've kind of started to lose my passion a little bit um i'm not gonna 100 percent lose it by any stretch of imagination but it was starting to dwindle and then i saw some of the work you guys are putting in and man i am fired up um so thank you for the work you guys are putting in um and there's some excellent ideas out there a lot of people are are on the same page and i'm digging it um literally and figuratively so let's let's get this thing found so uh, real quick, I want to throw out, uh, so I see a lot of people posting um, about keeping it simple. Have you guys been seeing this? The kiss. Yeah. Keep it, keep it kiss, simple. Keep it simple. It, yeah. You guys are about to make me very angry, aren't you? What's that? <laughs> you guys are about to make me very <laughs> angry, aren't you? No, no. Well, I, okay. So I want to, I want to go a little bit technical on Latin 
um, and the and the what keeping it simple technically could mean. So maybe, may, may, I'm going to go a little rhetorical on you guys. So you guys both know what Occam's razor is. Yes. All right. It in Latin, it's it's actually called lex parsimone. I guess I'm. I know I'm thuckadizing. Thuckadiddies. But um, which actually means entities should not be multiplied without necessity, right? But usually we paraphrase Occam's razor by saying the simplest explanation is most likely the right one, right? Right. Sounds easy and sounds like, okay, let's take a step back. And the problem is with Occam's razor in this thing is we don't really have a very much of a baseline to know what's simple and what's not simple. And if you can't define simple, here's where we're at. And if each one of these things is totally different, like JJP just said, astronomical and mathematical and geographical and I'm in Hamilton. You know what I'm saying? Like (laughs) you guys see where I'm going with this? Like, like you can't, you can't just blanket say, oh, Occam's razor must apply because you need a definition of simple and we don't have it. Now, I will say, though, the modernization of the things that we're doing is our downfall. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like, like that, the, like if you were to take out of context problem or puzzle solving uh, and take them from the eighties and place that uh, and, and utilize things that never existed back then. Um, you, you will complicate the process. Some of it will be easier, but some of it will make, will be more difficult. For example, Google maps overhead. Oh God. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like that I agree with, like, let's take a step back. That's not really a, you know, that's, like each one of these can't be solved by taking some overhead Google earth image. And no, what, what you need is an overhead projector. Correct. You the wrong overhead guys. Yeah. Overhead this, right? So, so that, uh, do you guys get where I'm going with that? For those of you that don't know what that is, um, there used to be this thing. <laughs> it was a metal box with a glass plate on top with a light behind it. And on top of it was a magnifying glass and uh, another piece of glass on the other end. And when you put an image over the light, it would pick up the image and it would project it and make it bigger on the wall. It's like your HD projector you watch movies in your backyard on, but for the classroom. Somebody feed that dog, by the way. So, yes, that's what an overhead projector is. And, um, uh, uh, okay, right? So, keeping it simple is relative. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it is relative, uh, but I will also say this. Um, he didn't say that you solve them all in completely different ways. He did no. He did say that there are different methods you That's need to true. use. That's true. Uh, but uh, to say that they, you need to solve them all in completely different ways goes against the whole argument we just had. You, you, made, you made a good point that nobody ever really defined keeping it simple, right? And I'm always the one that pushed it. So let me define what I think keeping it simple is. Okay. It's, it's, it's super easy. It's simple. It's simple. It really, (laughs) Um, (laughs) I can't wait to hear that. So, so the, these puzzles follow a path, not like a, not like a physical path that you have to walk down, but like a, you know, a metaphorical path, right? It, It follows step one, step two, step three, step four. That's your path. Once you have to take a step away from one of those, you are no longer keeping it simple, right? Once you say like Roanoke, uh, the mace could mean Samuel Mace and Samuel Mace did X, Y, and Z. And that connects to B, C, and D. Once you take the step away from Samuel Mace directly, you're no longer keeping it simple. I agree. Samuel Mace follow along to the next step. Right. Does that make sense? Any sort of, any sort of degrees of separation from a clue that you go, you're no longer keeping it simple. That's always been what, I, how I've defined keeping things simple. Step one should apply to A. Step two should apply to B. Step three should apply to C. And none of them should apply to like B.42 or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. You you, you, you don't need to branch off that many times. 
I don't necessarily think there should be any branches away from the path at all. Like I think it, it's a straight, it's a straight line from start to finish. Once you start branching off and going into other directions, you're, you're screwing up. So like, for instance, when we're talking about Boston and we talk about the, um, when Xenophon and Thucydides is on, is, uh, as you know, when Xenophon is north of Thucydides or whatever the, the quote is, I don't have it in front of me. Um, so I agree with you. Yeah. So you don't, you only need one branch and that one branch goes to the letter and that's it. Boom. Done. Branch over. No, no, no. You don't even need the letter. You don't even need the letter to solve that. You, that, 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 that verse gives you two people's names. You don't need to know their name. Like you don't need to know anything about them at all. You don't need to know that's a quote from a letter. It literally tells you a place, a direction and a, and a, and a number. That's all you need from that line. But that also ties it that no, no, I disagree because that ties it to Boston. But if you already know Boston, which we already know because of the verse or because of the painting. Right. If you, yeah, I agree. Yeah. If, you, if we're assuming, so again, this is your baseline, right? So if we're assuming that That's we already know it's Boston, point. then yes. my point. Yes. If you already know Boston, okay, then maybe you have a quote unquote definition for simplest or simple. But if you, I mean, you're, you're look, you're hindsight's 2020, right? Hey, I want to say for the record, by the way, uh, at some point, uh, I said, fuck a dies. Fuck it. What did I say? <laughs> oh, I okay. got ripped for that. And I, listen, I made it up. I thought it was funny just for the mm -hmm. record. I actually never really learned how to say it, say it. I don't know how to say it. But, <laughs> it's but I it's stuck it in it. Thucydides do does not exist. It's stuck it in it. Oh, is that how? Do, what? Thucydides. Thucydides. I don't know. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Listen, I got, I got <laughs> a message request. I got a message for that. Nobody got it, and I was just joking. I know that that's <laughs> probably not the right explanation, but um, that's what I went with, and I, I thought it was funny. Sometimes people don't get my humor. Okay, um, but I'm yes. surprised I never got a message about Pupolo. Pupolo. I, Pupolo. Uh, Pupolo. 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 Super fun to say. I don't care what that is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fun. Pupolo. Pupolo. Poop. Hello. <laughs> Bradley, I need to know what you think about my dream. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Your dream. Um I, I, need I agree know. with um with Kit. You need new underwear from a different brand. And here's it you know, it may not even been for you. That may have that that may have uh, I may have manifested that dream in you because I've recently been unhappy with the way my underwear fits. Um <laughs> and I don't wear I don't wear for the loom, I wear Hanes. So maybe okay. I need to try through the loom. Okay. Maybe that's what's happened. Are you a tidy whities guy, Bradley? You seem like a tidy I'm not a tidy. No, 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 you no. I, I do okay. boxer briefs. Oh. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I, I don't yeah. like I don't like boxers because there's just they they don't help in any way, shape, or form other than a layer between you and your clothes. I don't like briefs because I don't need a hug all day long in that area. Boxer yeah. briefs keep you between you and your clothes and they just they 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 help and they support and they're comfortable and they're wonderful and i love them okay this is this is getting a little tmi um <laughs> however, i will i will say that um as a as a child i wore whatever was given to me i was under roots all the way super oh, yeah same here yeah you totally. Yeah. Whatever, whatever showed up in Christmas or birthday boxes is what went on my body or whatever my brother um, was wearing uh, apart from underwear itself. Usually mm, I might've gotten some underwear hand-me-downs. You got uh, hand-me-downs. But uh, fruit of the, fruit of the looms were big time in my era, along with a lot of the other things that you guys saw on EU. Um but uh, yeah, maybe in some other episode, we can pursue this uh, conversation a little bit further and, and um, really dig into the details and explore the space. What do you guys think? Maybe we do an underwear episode. Well, that's what we're always trying to figure out. The casks <laughs> are under where? <laughs> oh my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Parsimony.
Um, yes. So that, okay. That's your interpretation. Right. I think that's what happened. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to fruitaloom.com whenever we're done. <laughs> you are fruitaloom.com. Hey guys, could you not mention Neil Rothstein during the podcast? Because Neil Rothstein said he was going to sue me if I said uh, the name Neil Rothstein during the podcast. So if you could try really hard just, just not to say Neil Rothstein so that Neil Rothstein doesn't sue me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, thanks.